everybody, welcome to video six. This is gonna be about physical properties of solids. I am outside on a beautiful day here on the farm and I have with me, I don't know if you can see him, Dublin, you wanna say hi? Say hi, Dub. Hi, Dub. That's Dublin, he's my dog, he's 15, he's 900 years old. So I hope you enjoyed this intro video clip. But if that rock and say this hamburger are both made of matter, then why are they so different? The rock is hard and rough and dark. The burger, on the other hand, is soft and juicy and has a lot of colors. That's how we can tell things apart, by their shape, color, smell, and so on. These are all called properties. And that's what we're going to talk about today, the properties of matter. So let's go. So what about this word properties? What does that mean? Well, it's really about how we describe things. Everything has special characteristics that make it unique, like water. It's matter. Can you think of ways to describe water? It's wet, smooth, it moves around a lot, you can see through it. These are all properties of water. By knowing these properties, I can decide that water is a good thing to dive into. What about something else, like rocks? Remember the rock I found in the cave? It had certain properties, but there are all kinds of rocks. Some are yellow, some are brown, some are even white. Some rocks are even softer than others, and some even smell different. By comparing the properties of matter, we can tell what kind of matter things are made of and what it can be used for. So I hope you enjoyed that video clip. As you can tell, it's a windy day here on the farm. So let's just remind ourselves matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. An example down here I have for you is a chair, and a non-example would be dream or an idea or friendship or something like that. Talking about matter, especially in chemistry, you're talking about how it can be described because then that's gonna allow you to do things with it based on its properties. Uh, another word for property is an attribute. Uh, characteristic might be another good word for that. Now matter comes with two different kinds of properties, physical and chemical. Physical is actually what we are going to focus on today and specifically physical properties of solids. So physical properties of ones that you can see with your eyeballs, okay? That means when you look at it, you can see its color and its shape and its texture and things like that. They are very easy to observe and you're not applying any fire or reacting it with other things. Those would be for chemical. So I'm gonna give you a huge list, so I hope you have your pen and paper handy. So here we go. Uh, number one is color, so whatever color it is, and of course it can be multicolored. Uh, shape, is it triangle or square or circle? Uh, the other one is texture, is it rough or bumpy or smooth? And then luster is just a fancy term for shiny. So you can say something is dull or you can say it has high luster if it's very shiny. A state of matter or whatever state of matter um, it is in is also a physical property. So is it a solid or a liquid or a gas? And that might be good for if you're talking about water, if you're talking about carbon dioxide. This is a different category category um, in the fact that it's an ability or something that it can do but it's still a physical property so does it have the ability to be molded like the horseshoe I have in the picture or can it be pressed into a shape like a coin that you see down here that's malleable a good way to think about malleable or if you're testing it in the lab is if you took a hammer to it and you actually hit it would it leave an indent or that hole in it or is it too strong and it wouldn't Another one is flexible, so can it bend without breaking? And that's really the big deal, so I've got a slinky here for you. That's a good one for bending. Uh, soft metals like the copper you see here are very easily to be bent. Ductile is probably one you haven't heard before. Ductile means that it can be drawn into a wire, and copper is excellent for that. A lot of the metals are ductile, and I'm showing you down here in the bottom right. Hardness. Hardness means its ability to be scratched 
and we're going to talk a lot about hardness when we're talking about minerals like diamonds um, and we're going to talk about it with metals so can you literally take your fingernail and scratch it or not there's actually a scale um, and you see one down here and it's usually one to ten with one being the weeniest and ten being the strongest continuing on with our physical properties of abilities here can it conduct heat can it conduct electricity um, and can it attract a magnet all of these are physical properties of matter of solids another one these are I call them the data points so the data points might be its melting point when it goes from a solid to a liquid could be its boiling point from a liquid to a gas or its freezing point from a liquid to a solid and all of those would be numbers that you would report out now this is definitely a Burkeism of mine I call it the nose and the knots so when you are describing um, matter or anything in chemistry for that matter you can always some say something is not so you can say steel is not flexible or you can say that it doesn't conduct electricity if you're talking about wood so don't be afraid to include the nose and the knots when you are talking about um, anything in chemistry. Quick example about a horseshoe for physical properties. So these are all the ones that you could possibly list for it. So what's its color? Well, it's gray and silver with a little bit of rust. Uh, what's its shape? Well, it's U-shaped. Its texture is it's kind of rough and coarse. Its luster is about medium. Is it flexible? No. Uh, is it malleable? Yes, when it's heated. Uh, its hardness is pretty high. You definitely can't scratch it with your fingernail. Does it conduct heat? Absolutely. Does it conduct electricity? Sure, it's a metal. Is it magnetic? Yep. And then I actually found its melting point for you here is 2,750 degrees Fahrenheit. I hope you enjoyed physical properties of solids. Be looking for physical properties of liquids. I'd like you to define and describe them for me and then definitely have at least uh, 10 in a list. And thanks for watching.